Welcome to another C++ tutorial. I'm Mark Gingrass. I'm going to talk to you about for loops to index through arrays and constant data types. Also, I'm going to show you how to use an online C++ compiler. You might want to use an online compiler if you just want to practice your code somewhere else besides at your house. All you need is a internet browser and the internet. So go to a website like cpp.sh that's a C++ shell that's online. Uh, you can also search Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you want for online C++ compilers. They're all slightly different. That's not the best solution, but it works, and I just want to show you another uh, IDE and compiler. That being said, let's get started. Let's create an array, and I'll explain what an array is as I am typing it out. We're going to start with an integer array called myArray. And right now it just looks like a regular integer data type called myArray. But we're going to add something called a subscript, and I'm going to put the number 5 inside of that subscript, and we're going to set it equal to something, or in other words, we'll initialize it. What that is doing, it is telling the operating system that before you run this program, create a piece of memory that has five consecutive um, integer allocations, in a, in a sequential manner. So my array is not just one integer, it's one integer followed by four more all sequentially. That way you can index it. And we can learn more about arrays as we go through some of these other programs. So to initialize it, you can either initialize them all at once with a putting a zero in there, or you can put each array value separated by commas. So we have the myArray sub 5, so a size 5 when you're initializing it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five values in this array. There's a key difference between value and position. The position starts with 0. Even though there's a 0 there as a value, that's also position 0. Position 1, position 2, 3, and 4. Just remember that as we go through this. Let's print out these integer values in my array using a for loop. For integer index is what normally you'd call it if you're doing it uh, if you're indexing an array. Integer index equals zero. Index is less than five because zero, one, two, three, four, don't forget. It, it's got five positions but starts with zero. Index plus plus we will iterate through the array printing the values out. So let's print out the position and the value position or subscript is what you'll hear it called equals index and then let's add the value value equals my array sub index end line so in this little statement here, we're going to see out to the monitor the position of my array as we iterate through them and the actual value of each position in that array. My array sub index. Index can be any integer value. It can be a mathematical expression as long as it equates to an index value. So this could be a 3 plus 2 or another variable doing something. Uh, we'll get more into that in later programs. <clears throat> Let's run this code. Before you do that, though, you should highlight and copy all of your code because this is an online compiler, and we don't really control what happens when we hit that Run button. It, it could error out, and we don't want to lose our code. So now we can paste it if something did happen. Click on Run, and you'll see down at the bottom the position of subscript 0, the value is 0. Subscript 1, value is 3, and so on. And so this is a very good way to store multiple values of the same data type. All of the data, all the values, must be the same data type as what you declared it over here. You declare this as an integer my array. Uh, I'm sorry, an integer array called my array of size 5. Uh, let's go ahead and show you one other thing before we get into constant data types. 
if you did not put the 5 in here and you left it blank, it will actually initialize the size based on your initialized values over on the right hand side. So this is size 5. So it will actually still run just like that and I'll show you by running. And the same results. This is another feature I had to show you there. Before we get into constant, let's actually try character values instead of integers because you can have an array of any data type. So let's do character my array and instead of numbers let's put characters in there like A, F. Uh, characters like the digit 3 is different from the character 3 so you can put those in there and let's compile this and make sure it runs. There we go same results we've got them down here position zero, the value stored there is A, and these can be complex arrays, complex data types. It doesn't have to be character, boolean, or integer, or double. It could be whatever data type is out there, and you're gonna be creating your own eventually. Let's say you wanted to change the size of my array. You can, if you changed it here, you would also have to go to the for loop and change it here, and then if, let's say you had 15 other for loops down below, and later down in the uh, down in your program you have to change it in all those different places to avoid that and to avoid other problems let's create a constant array size integer constant integer we're gonna call it my array size you can call it whatever you want this is just a naming convention that works well because I know that it goes with my array you might have multiple arrays called your array a array whatever you want to call it so let's set that equal to 5 now and replace anywhere where the 5 is with my array size. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in these two locations here and run the code. And it works the same as you would expect. Now let's say you're collaborating with a bunch of people and they're writing code and they want to change your array size. So let's go ahead and say that somebody says my array size equals 7 down you know on line 2000 of your code what you're gonna get is a syntax error that's because this is a constant integer data type it means once it's set and initialized you cannot change it so what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a compile a compile time error or a syntax error when you click run see right here under compilation it's a read-only variable my array size you cannot change it so it actually gives you an error, which is exactly what was intended by making it a constant value. So now if we wanted to make it a different size, let's make it size 7 and add two more to this array. All we have to do is change it where the array is initialized and the size. And if you had 24 loops in a row with my array size, you wouldn't have to change it 20 different times, just those two times. As you can see, that works just fine. Hope you enjoyed this little lesson on arrays. Uh, we'll be using them, and we're going to be using for loops all the time, so get used to them. You can Don't forget, you can change the value of any one of these array positions by doing my array sub whatever it might be, 3 equals whatever you want. You access it just like it's a regular integer. It's just got that subscript on there. Anything you can do with a regular integer, you can do with an array. All right, I'll see you next time on the next video.